There you are. Hi. Hey, you want some popcorn? Where'd you get that popcorn? It doesn't matter, but I got it just for you. From the Dairy Mart or something? No, no, no. special. I'm glad nobody's here right now, so I want to talk to you a little bit, you know? What? You got a minute? You got a minute? Do you want me to stop? Can, well, can you talk can to you me while I'm working? Well, I don't know if you can pay attention. Do two things at once. I'm a woman. I can multitask. Okay. Hey, I'm a little bit worried about your job stuff. Something weird is going on with Mark. Strange. Has he said anything to you about your job or anything? What? Hey, do you, have you noticed your office isn't really proceeding forth, forward? Remember the big promise about the nice office and stuff? Why are you bringing this up? I'm just trying to help you out, look out for you. I'm just wondering if you heard anything or something's going on. No. You know, maybe I'm just imagining it. It's not really true, but you know, I'm just worried about you and your job. I like you and I don't want you to have to leave or anything. Do you like some popcorn? <laughs> no, I gotta go talk to one of my friends. This time on Graveyard Cars. Traded the Jeep uh, last week. It's so much fun to drive. It's a piece of junk, buddy. He's playing the game with you. He always plays the game with you. You've got to be kidding me. What? <gasps> you had a Jeep Wrangler when you let me drive it. Now's the time while you have access to the back of it to make sure everything's right. Tony showed up today from Tony's Mopar Parts. You might know him as Tony D'Agostino. He knows the parts catalogs better than Chrysler. How would you like to pay $2,000 for a nice, original Rimblo steering wheel? How are you looking over there, buddy? Oh, oh, there it went. I hope I can keep a secret. Got that car coming to get you, Bob, 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 Barbara. The unburied dead. Coming back to life. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son-in-law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right and our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life. If we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. This week, I want to get the dash assembled and installed in the 70 Sunroof Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rollo! You got his new rig. It's making me reminisce of mine now. It's too cool for Royal. Whoa, I about dropped that. Did you really trade for that? Yeah. You really did? Yeah. A quad. My four-wheeler, yep. Traded the Jeep uh, last week. It's so much fun to drive. This is the best thing you bought so far. And I really like Royal's Jeep. It looks like it'd be a lot of fun. I wish I had one just like it. You know, I can just imagine Royal driving around, having a lot of fun with the wind blowing his hair back. Or not. How does it drive, Royal? It drives good. Can I drive it? No. Why? He said no. You can't drive my Jeep. And I thought at first he was just fooling, but he was serious. I want to drive it around the block. How come you never asked to drive any of my other cars? He doesn't want you to drive it, Darren. I don't know what that was about with Darren. He's never asked to drive any of my other cars. I'm not going to let somebody else drive it when I don't know all the quirks. He didn't want you to drive it. I guess not. You know, before all this happened about the Jeep, I thought Royal was a stand-up guy, but now he's a backstabber, just like Mark says. I suppose if I drove Jackals. it and come back, I'd get blamed for this, right? Yep, here we oh, go. There now we that go. he can't drive it, he's gonna pick it apart. There's <laughs> a lot. It's a piece of junk. It's a piece of junk, buddy. We need to get the Daytona moved out of the room and the Challenger moved in. So if you cannot beat up on him for a few minutes, you come in here and let's get that moved out. Are you sure I can't drive it, Royal, really? <laughs> Darren, I, I told you stop. I don't, I don't stop. even know. I'm. Okay, when can I drive it, Ted? You're not gonna get to drive it, okay? <laughs> get over it. You don't get to drive it. That's the way it is. <laughs> He's Let's serious. Hey, pissed off. Hey, don't Here, really piss off. Don't, don't leave the keys laying right around for it, for okay? Don't. Keep <laughs> them laying out plain Royal, sight. stick to your guys. You never let it drive. It I know that look that Darren gave to Royal. Something's gonna happen, and it's not gonna be good. Let him drive. 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 Let him so right now I'm getting ready to take the Daytona out and put it in the body shop, move the Challenger sunroof car back into the assembly room so we can put the rest of it together and get it shipped off to its owner in Canada. Well, I'm gonna be eating popcorn this week while the rest of them are working on the cars. Want some more? Mm -hmm. Can we get the car outside? Stop the popcorn! <laughs> oh my God, dude. If anything happens back there while it's under your direction, 
I have every intention of absolutely killing both of you guys, investigation discovery style. So I'm looking forward to a productive week. Now, out the door. Out the door, be my eyes. I'll watch this side, you watch your shot. How are you looking over there, buddy? Oh, this is a start to the week. Kind of made my heart skip a beat a little bit. Great, see the dent in the I seen spoiler? it, I seen it. That's your fault. Moving the Daytona from the assembly room out into the shop, of course Murphy's Law, it fell off the jack, caved in the nose. That is not the way I want to start my week off. No, shit happens. I mean, when you're surrounded by toilet flies, it happens even more. <laughs> the front K-member came loose off the floor jack when Mark was trying to scoot it across the floor. The damage could have been a lot worse. Hey, looking D? Well, I've got about two inches here. Wait, that's good news. Okay. Got about three inches right here. It's just, it's one of those things from now on, there's a protocol. No suspension, no steering wheel, no come in the assembly room. Once we got past that little faux pas, things actually went pretty good. We repositioned the jack so it couldn't come out, moved it out to here. So now that we do have the Daytona safely in place, we're gonna move the Challenger into the assembly room so we can start putting the interior together. What's Tom gonna think of his nose cone? Tom is going to be depressed. And Tom's not gonna know anything about it. We're gonna fix it. We got the Challenger inside, that's good. No damage to it, that's good. We'll take care of the Daytona this week uh, out in the body shop, get the nose cone bumped out and painted. Uh, as for the Challenger, we're ready to start putting the interior together. Hopefully everything goes smooth and we have it done by the end of the week too. True or false? The only engine option available on the Daytona Charger in 1969 was the legendary 426 Hemi. The answer coming up after the break. So, true or false, was the 426 Hemi the only engine available in the Dodge Charger Daytona in 1969? The answer is false. Since the Charger Daytona was built on the Dodge Charger RT platform, the standard engine was an L-code 375 horsepower 440 Magnum, and the Hemi was an available option. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. The Daytona fell off the jack and dented the nose cone. Hopefully Tom doesn't find out. Darren's pissed off because Royal won't let him drive his new Jeep. Are you seriously pissed? And Darren's been playing the game, making Holly think she's gonna get fired. I just got started assembling the dash for the sunroof car, and here comes Holly. I was looking for Mark this afternoon because Darren mentioned that he thought that my job was in jeopardy because I don't have my office. Darren said that I might be in danger of losing my job. Why would he say something like that? I just feel like maybe he's playing the game with me and... He's playing the game with you. He always plays the game with you. I know. He, he loves winding you up. Well, I haven't been able to get into my office and you've been kind of doing your own thing and so I just... Here's the deal. I've, I've been working on a surprise, okay, over at the other office besides just your office. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I want to share that with the team because I want it to be a legitimate surprise. So I've kept my mouth shut about it and I've been tight-lipped and I know I've been hard to get hold of because I am running between both places. That's nothing personal. Your job is absolutely not in danger. No, it's, see, he's got you. God, he's great. He's a manipulating oh, yeah, SOB. Yeah. You gotta learn his routine. He is masterful, a masterful, he's a wizard of the game. Holly's been here long enough to know that Darren's just winding her up. That's what he does. No more do I put that fire out. And Holly comes at me with, what's going on at the studio? Tell me the secret, I gotta know. I wanna know about the surprise. I wanna know the surprise. Why? Why does well, it kill you? I really like secret projects, and I'm really excited that Mark is working on one. I can help you, because there's a lot of heat on you right now. What, what heat's on me right now besides having to get three cars done? Well, I wish that he would let me in on it because I'm a good secret keeper. Okay, duly noted. Thank All you right. very much. You're safe. Uh, you're not gonna fire me? You're safe, I'm not gonna fire you. All right. Else. You put your life in my hands, I put my life in your hands. That's what we do, this is the Marines. I don't make a lot of references to movies, I don't think. Okay. You choose to call hell. <laughs> I could check people's knowledge. He calls home. Like all of a sudden he'll just be talking to me and then it's like. You send that many guys in there after him, don't forget one thing, a good supply of body bags. And then like. 
I mean, so far, I don't think she's seen a movie. Rambo, the first show. The first one. <laughs> Do you need my help? No. With anything? Probably those girl movies. You don't like The Notebook or stuff like that. Wizard of Oz, weird things. Have a good night. Aren't those nice? Uh, we're moving along really well right now at the shop. I think we're going to have a good day. I think it'll be productive. We're winding down on the stuff that has to go on the uh, Sunroof Challenger. Really, we're getting down to dash and interior. Uh, but that's going to be our goal today is see if we can wrap everything up except for those two things. So next week, we can get those done. And really, we'll be, we'll be out of the woods. All I need to do is find the screws that go in here. Got to be for Daddy's Ford pickup, huh? Are these for Mark's Ford pickup? I don't know what they're doing, but I wish they just Get something done. That's good. That's fine. Darren. I got okay. them both. Darren. What, Mark? Okay, the, the, I got it handled, buddy. The, the thing's getting, that's getting old, that whole thing. Darren is like a petulant child that wants what he wants. And so in the case of like Royal's Jeep, he just beats that thing to death. Now he's on the popcorn, he beats that thing to death. No, but I asked him about driving it and he just come unglued and said no. To get What's it? the big deal with driving that Jeep to, to the store to get a few nuts and bolts you needed? Store. Maybe he just doesn't want you so to drive So he asked him and he said no. He knows you're going to pick it apart. Just point blank, no. Didn't even think about it. Well, what's the deal with oh, you and that Jeep? Oh, you're going to milk that for, Nancy. What's the deal with you and that Jeep? Darren's not letting the Jeep thing go. Why wouldn't you let him drive the yeah, Jeep? Yeah, what's the deal? Uh, because I, I don't even know the Jeep that well. Oh. So you were looking out for his best interest. You didn't yeah. want to get hurt. Right now I'm getting all the firewall stuff ready, cleaned up. I got it together. I got the heater box apart, cleaned. I've got to reassemble it. New gasket. I got to sandblast a brake pedal assembly to get it on. Then after all this stuff is in, we can install the dash. I've got all these parts ready, so I'm that far ahead of the game. Now if I can just get them cleaned up and in, we'll be fine. Darren, what are you doing? Hey, Mr. Stingy. Hey, you've had a little bit of time to reconsider the Jeep deal. Why, why, why is it so important that you drive my Jeep? Please, I thought it'd be fun. It is fun. It's a blast, but... But I'll never know. No, you'll know. You'll have one. Tell me how much fun it is and everything else. And I say, man, can we take you to the store? You've never and you asked say no. to drive any of my other cars. Nobody has. Well, I don't why, want to why drive all the Coronet. Everybody Coronet, want to drive my Jeep. Because if something happened to the Coronet, I'd feel bad. If something happened to the Jeep, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Well, if something happened when you were driving to the Jeep, it, I would feel bad. I have a lot of insurance. I have insurance. I'm not sure. So uh, you're not going to let me drive, in other words. You know, Rolly, if you want to act childish about this, I'm not going to give you my popcorn or let you know where I'm getting my popcorn. So you're going to you take your popcorn and go home? You need to grow up. Yeah, I'm going to take the popcorn. I'm going to go home. And my source. <laughs> I don't know what I just walked out on, but hey, dude, be careful. He's going to take his popcorn and go home. I managed to find the fuel neck for the Challenger, so hopefully Mark can help me get this thing all tack welded up and get it installed so we can move on to other things. Hey, Mark, here's the fuel neck. OK. Kind of eroded there. Uh, Do you have any more of those, really? No, no. man, these are a very rare piece. Well, it's, it's 70 only. You notice the because it has the EVP nipple on the top. Darren, do you want to put on the license plate and I'll go start welding that? Yeah, if I know where it's at, buddy. Oh, Josh, come on, friend. You need to grow up a little bit, Josh. <laughs> He's a traitor. Okay, we're going to weld this up. I'll be back in in a minute. So, the only thing you want to do when you're doing old stuff, like those got kind of unique pinholes in them, uh -huh. mount it in something solid so you're not chasing it around a tabletop. Hey, Steve. This is Darren. How are you? Hey, I was wondering if I could drive your Jeep. The filler neck on the Challenger had a few pinholes. That's not uncommon on those. They sit outside and they rust, especially where the grommet goes on. So we needed to weld up some holes. So when do I get to do some welding? I kind of took tonight as a great opportunity to have Mark show me a little bit of welding. You want to learn to weld? Yeah. Make your deal, sunshine. Come on in. I told you I was going to help you start getting some tools. Come on. Don't got to be shy. There's no trick. Mark was really quick to jump on top of that. And I should have known there was some kind of stipulation to it. Out of the kindness of my heart, I had actually purchased him a welding helmet. These are your eyes. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. What? Hey, Todd, how are you? Hey, how's your Jeep running these days? You got two of them now? OK, that doesn't have any problems or anything, does it? I don't want some old junky one. That's a nice helmet. That's auto dim. It's got a little button on the front. See how it's burning away? Yeah. That's all soft metal. There's nothing there. In that case, are you going to have to put something there? It's very ironic. You know, Mark will put me down, humiliate me, whatever he, whatever he has to do to make himself feel better. But at the same time, I did learn a lot. Guy's a strange teacher. Very strange.
Okay, you don't mind if I drive it? Oh, no, I'm not going to four-wheel it or anything. I'm just going to tootle around town a little bit with it. Make sure it's got gas, okay? Oh, make sure it's clean and vacuumed out also. I don't want to drive some dirty Jeep around. Okay, hook the grinder up. Grind that smooth. Give it to Derek. He's going to have to do a restoration uh, paint on that because we, we can't metal finish it now because it's had welding on it. Okay. He really picked up well. He, uh, he knew exactly what I was talking about by the blow-throughs, and uh, I think welding 101 went, went really well. You're welcome. Bye. Scored on a good Jeep. Not some junky old Jeep like Royals. I'm really getting tired of Royal like, like a little child, but you know, they're doing fine without me. I'm just going to leave, and, you know, I just need a break, and they'll do fine without me. I'm surrounded by escaped mental patients. I don't know how much more I can do. <laughs> there are a hundred more things to do on this car. Are you ready? Yeah. What? While the rest of us are making progress on the Sunroof Challenger, Darren's going nuts because Royal won't let him drive his new rig. Holly's been bugging me to tell her what this big secret is. And what is with Darren and the new obsession with popcorn? And he's shoveling it in like there's no tomorrow. Boy, peace, 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 peace. I escaped Alcatraz. I'm gonna go to Death Brothers and get something to drink. I'm pretty thirsty. I've been working hard all day today, you know? I'm getting jacked up on Dutch Brothers. I'm gonna, not gonna get anything for the, any of the rest of them. Royal who? <laughs> there is no Royal or a Jeep anymore. They're both gone as far as I'm concerned. They don't exist. Of course Mark needs my help today. Mark needs mental help, psychological, deep therapy. But yeah, he needs my help on the Challenger. But, you know, what's five or 10 minutes here or there? I need a break. I've been working 12 hours straight. Well, it's just the idea, just a, this is a junky old Jeep. I just asked, I mean, to drive it. I should be responsible to drive that old $500 Jeep down to the store to get a couple nuts and bolts. It's just Royal's whole attitude all about it, you know? Oh, hey, here's somebody. Hey, hey, pal, if you had a Jeep, would you let me drive it? No? <laughs> well, on you too, Royal. Uh, been working with Holly on the different facets of restoring a car, such as the rear axle, front suspension, things like that. Uh, I want her to come into the assembly room and see uh, some more of the payoff type of repairs, like installing emblems and hood pins and grills, and that's probably the funnest part of the restoration, so I think she should get her hands dirty at that. Okay, I know I grabbed you out of the back okay. office, and I know you're busy, but you wanted to get some more work on cars. Oh, yeah. I know you're dressed clean, and you're not really dressed for this, but there's a couple little trinkets I want to put on the Challenger. And I thought you might enjoy doing it with me. I was right in the middle of doing my research, and Mark came and said that I could help him with the car. These are the discussions. Discussion. So line that up over. Butamus. I just want you to get a few turns into it. Do not slip off like this. So once you're in that position, make sure you're straight up and down on it. Okay. Put your finger around it even if you want to be safe. So really nervous about chipping the paint. Um, Mark made me feel good as far as like telling me to take my time. <gasps> but then I dropped the screwdriver and... <laughs> Remember that part about holding on to it around there? Uh, uh. I got it. Oh, that was scary. That is scary. <laughs> With Holly being as new as she is at the working on the cars, this is the first assembly work that she's done. This is the part where you have to be really careful. I'm not pushing hard. I'm letting her take her time. If it takes her 20 minutes to put on a hood discussion that might take me two or three minutes, that's okay, because she's learning. She's learning how the screwdriver can slip off of the screw or how you can strip it out. So these are really good lessons. Um, in fact, if the rest of the guys learned from lessons like this, I probably would have less screw ups around the shop. But so far, she's doing a good job. Darren is missing in action. I used to get happy about Darren being missing in action, but now I realize he's either A, gone home, or B, he's up to no good. There's a lot better Jeep right over there than Royals. They'd probably let me drive that if I asked them. There it is. I don't need a new one. I don't even have to drive a new one. Hey, bud. If you had a Jeep, would you let me drive it? No? Later. That guy was rude as Royal. Hey, if you had a Jeep, would you let me drive it? That? If you had a Jeep Wrangler, would you let me drive it? <laughs> sure. Oh, right, thank you. <laughs> See, he let me drive, he doesn't even know me. I've known Royal for how long? 
How are you? Hey, if you had a Jeep, would you let me drive it? You would? You ever see Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry? <laughs> Is that a real movie? It's a real movie, yeah. I had, uh, uh, I haven't seen it. About Vanishing Point. You ever seen Night of the Living Dead, the original one? Mm-mm. You never saw that movie? No, I don't like scary movies. Where the guy's out in the, in the cemetery, in the very beginning, they're driving like a 67 Pontiac Tempest. It might be a 66, I never saw the taillights on it. Have, have you not seen 14 Days? No. <laughs> I was totally excited to work on the car. It was a nice break from the research. So, have you reconsidered telling me what the big surprise is? No. <laughs> oh. no. I'm a good secret keeper, that's what I do. I am a good secret keeper. Born in lust, turn to dust. Born in sin, come on in. Storm of the century. Um, working with Mark is really fun. Um, although it's kind of awkward because he keeps bringing up all these movie quotes and I have no idea what he's talking about. Mayhap you is, mayhap you ain't. You want me to do yeah, it all the way? Yeah, go ahead and run that one all the way down. May, may happy you is, may, may happy you ain't. Do you just like sit around and watch? No, I just certain may happy you is, may happy you ain't. Salem's Lot. Mm. Don't recommend that one either with Rob Lowe or the remake. <laughs> I've been loving working on the cars. It's It kind of bridges that gap between all the codes and numbers, and then what's real. That's cool. Is that cool or what? Nice work. Nice work. <laughs> Thanks. Always be prepared. That's Rambo. Yeah, best, uh, best defense is a good offense, so. Or best offense is a good defense. Thank you, you can go back. Yeah, I'm thirsty now. What did those last people have that were just here? What? Those last people, what did they have? So there was a iced double chocolate mocha, iced white mocha, and an iced gold blended caramelizer. I want something like that that's sweet and not overly sweet. Hey, I got a question for you. If you had a Jeep Wrangler, would you let me drive it? Yeah, okay. What about her? Would you let me drive it? No, why not? Yeah, see, everybody, everybody except Royal. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man, not a problem. Thank you. Can say take easy again? Delicious, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Best coffee in town. Boy, Royal is really missing out. If he's still my friend, I would've got him one of these. When I'm a cheap friend, all I gotta do is let me drive that Jeep and get it over with. When Chrysler introduced the brand new sporty Dodge Challenger in 1970, it was available in a multitude of colors. What was the most popular color that year? Was it Plum Crazy, Hemi Orange, or Sublime? The answer coming up after the break. So what was the most popular color on the Dodge Challenger in 1970? Was it the Plum Crazy Purple, the Hemi Orange, or the Sublime Green? The answer is FC7 Plum Crazy. Even though there was a virtual rainbow of color choices in 1970, the FC7 Plum Crazy Purple stood out to be the most popular color on the Dodge Challenger. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. We've all been busting our ass to get the Sunroof Challenger done on time. Meanwhile, because Royal won't let Darren drive the Jeep, he's been stopping people he doesn't even know, asking him if they had a Jeep, could he drive it? What does that mean? I don't have to go back to work, do I really? Today I'm putting together the dash assembly for the 70 Sunroof Challenger. Without a doubt, the dash assembly in any car is the most intricate and the most requiring of carefulness. So therefore, I like to do a lot of it myself. Wires are old, they're brittle, they break. So if you get in there like Bobo the Circus Monkey and start pulling on stuff, you're gonna destroy some. Now that I've actually got the dash and the headlight switches in place, as well as the AM8 track, this car was optioned with the R22 AM8 track. Very rare, very difficult to find. Everything is in place. The wiring harness, I just got it out of another 70 Challenger RT parts car that I had. It's in really, really nice shape. It's spent 40 years in a car. That means it wants to go right back into the same spots that it came out of. You watch as I start to put this together, 
how things sort of fall back into where they belong. So this is the main yoke of the wiring harness here. So it goes over that. And again, this just came out of a car for the first time in 40 years, so it has a memory to it. This is the bulkhead, what they call a bulkhead. This plugs into the firewall. The way Chrysler designed these, which is really cool, you can build the whole dash out. And all you have to do is put that dash in the car as a unit, put this up against the firewall, put the nuts on it, plug into it, and it's a car again. Now's the time while you have access to the back of it to make sure everything's right. This is your wiper switch, your headlight, and your dimmer switch for the dash. Look at how they just wanna go right in there, perfectly into spot. There's that and that. Then over to the dimmer switch and the headlight switch. You can tell by the way they're sitting where they wanna go and where they were. I actually had Mike uh, Mancini out at uh, Instrument Specialties rebuild the instrument cluster for this. One, without a doubt, he does a better job than we did. And that instrument cluster and the gauges is just beautiful. If you're buying Dave Weiss's books, which you should be, he has wiring harnesses, original factory pictures of the wiring harnesses from Chrysler. That'll help you on any of them that don't make sense. Because again, these all have a memory where they're going, but not all new ones do. As I'm finishing putting together the dash assembly for the 70 Challenger RT, I'm reminded back like when we first got the car years ago. I was really excited because it was what would appear to have been a very, very rare car. However, what I didn't take into consideration when we bought the car, it was a basket case, but there wasn't many pieces of the basket. We had quarters and a roof. We had a roof door for the, for the sunroof. We had fender tag, broadcast sheet. We had dash bin. We had a complete numbers matching front end on it as far as the inner structure goes, but otherwise it was just a shell. So what I've had to do over the years is find all those rare options, those options that at one time I thought were just the most amazing things in the world have turned out to be a pain in the butt. You know, the car's option with R22, which is the AM 8-track radio and three-speaker dash. I gotta go out and hunt down an original AM 8-track radio, hunt down somebody that restores the original speakers for the three-speaker dash, but that's not all there is to it. It's like with many of the options, it's not just a matter of putting it in and plugging it into power. If you look at the back side of this thing, it's like spaghetti. This car's an A01 light group car. So that means what, you get a dome light? No, it means you get everything that goes with that light. This is an under dash map light. That is hooked to a delay relay. That delay relay fades out after a few seconds. Rare, not even close. This is an original seatbelt light. This one is not an SE car, though it's loaded with SE options. It's not an SE car. So it got a little light right here on the dash that glows for about 20 seconds. How would you like to pay $2,000 for a nice original Rimblow steering wheel? That's what happens. You're all excited because it's on the code, it's on the broadcast sheet, but in reality, if it's not on the car, it's big money. On the car already, here's the SE finish panel. This finish panel that you see right here came standard on all SE Challengers, a JS29 car or a JH29 car. Good luck finding these. I just paid almost $2,000 for this one. It's a new old stock. So when you're looking at your car, if it's one that you already own, decode your broadcast sheet. If you can't do it yourself, go online. If you can't go online and do it, get a guy like Richard Kras over at My Mopar. He'll do it for a small fee. In the case of the Challenger, he did this one. Everything that you see highlighted, are special, hard to find options that I've had to go out and buy in addition to just standard equipment that's already difficult to buy. Find the car that you want. If it has all those options and you're bragging about it, make sure they're actually on the car and adjust the price accordingly for that and you've got an investment grade car. Hey there you are, pal. Hi Darren. I know you feel bad about it. You about have time what? to reconsider your answer? About what? About the Jeep, driving the Jeep. Oh, Darren. Darren just won't let it go. I don't understand. It's no big deal. It's just a, it's just another car. It's just another Jeep. It's, although it is a lot of fun to drive. It's for your own safety. I don't want anything to go wrong with you in it. You got insurance, don't you? Well, yeah, but. Just say yes. Try a new it's word. Only Try a new word in your vocabulary. Stretch a little bit. Yes. I don't know what the big deal is. Let me drive that clapped out piece of junk Jeep. So how about, I'll ask again. Can I drive the Jeep? <laughs> no. Why do you want to drive my Jeep? Why didn't you ask to drive my little Buick? Because I want to be able Nobody's to make it back Nobody's asked to drive my Cornette. Nobody's asked because to drive my pickup. Because your is your prized possession. I didn't want what to do that. What are you saying? It's the only thing I, the thing I got worth anything? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You know, Royal's a braggart. The other thing he's been bragging about is the engine, his 67 Cornette. He's original to the car. He's been bragging for years about these cars. Original, unmolested, just a peach. 
Guess what, Royal? Your engine is not the original engine to your car. You've got a clone. You've got a rebody. Sorry, Chrome Dome. Game over. Is that a f Dutch Brothers? Yeah, no one needs to take just a plain Dutch Brothers. using the out of Royal the because he won't let him take the Jeep. Did you go get a Dutch Brothers without me? With one of my went, cards? I think you went to passes? ask people to drive their Jeep. I didn't use your card. Actually, on the way to go down and get it, I asked a bunch of people about let me drive their Jeep. And guess what they said? <laughs> <laughs> your nose is. Did your you? nose is crooked. You know what I want you to do? I don't want you to embarrass the company anymore. I can only imagine what people were thinking when he was yelling out the window. I mean, hey, can I drive your Jeep? What are they going to say? No. He's a crazy man. You, you rode down to, to Dutch Brothers to stab me in the back, and you asked people if you could drive their Jeep? Yeah. yeah. Darren's crazy, running up and down the road, stopping people, asking if he could drive their Jeep. He's going to go to jail. You're that. in no position to say anything to me. Eight eyebrows. <laughs> you know Look what? at him stacking up there like you know a what? rainbow. You know what, Mark? Like I somewhere think that the rainbow, is... Judy Garland needs to be singing about that. <laughs> think it he is... stopped the crazy laugh. He is crazy. I can't. He is <laughs> all y'all. <laughs> he is crazy. I'm surrounded by escaped mental patients. I don't know how much more I can do. You laugh at him and he gets pissed off. I laugh at you and you get pissed off. You need That's help. awesome. Don't you need touch help. me. You You're help. sick in the head, dude. <laughs> One single pass to get the seats sent out to have them recovered, and they're, and they're not here. Can't believe it. Beautiful, yeah. huh? Looks nice. I hope I can keep a secret. We're working hard to finish the dash on the Sunroof Challenger. Holly still wants me to tell her the top secret project over at the studio. And Darren is making us all absolutely insane with this new obsession about popcorn. Every time you see him, he's got a handful of popcorn. Earlier this week, I gave Royal the task of making sure that the seats got sent out to the upholsterer so they could have the new material put on them so we could assemble them and put them in the car. That didn't happen. How'd you do that? I just grew up the seat thing. <laughs> what? What just... seat thing? And the seats that we don't have to put in the car right now. I gave them one single task to get the seats sent out to have them recovered, and they're, and they're not here. Mister, I can do everything. Mister, oh, look at me. I don't make mistakes. I'm the only one here that's got a brain. Now, where do you get that from? Mark is giving me a hard time because I forgot to order the seats. Rightly so. I'll take it. I deserve it. I forgot to order the seats. Custodian. Seriously, how did, you, how did you forget a pair of seats when I've ordered over 400,000 parts for the car, organized it, got it through the body shop, put the front suspension together, made sure everything matched the ICCA how rules you, for judging. What about the ones you missed, though? I did miss like, some. Out of, four, out of probably 10,000 so, parts, I probably missed 40 or 50. I don't know what the ratio is. So you is. let me order parts once and I missed I let you order one part and you missed the one part, so you're 100% a loser. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have on your mind so much it's, that, that you could lose that? Well, before I get anything done, you come and pull me off and have me do something else. Mm. Oh, I know all about that. That's Josh's excuse. So, so when uh, it's, it first is. off, this conversation has nothing to do with you two idiots. Then maybe you should take it into the other room. No, this is my room. There's only one idiot. Over everything here. here is mine. <laughs> okay. Everything under this okay, ten thousand square feet is mine. Okay. Young Another cool. way we could look at this. You screwed up. You trusted me. Where do we go from here? I gave him one job get the seats sent out so they'd be back so we could finish putting them together. There's still an assembly on the seats when they get back. There are a hundred more things to do on this car besides the seats. What do you want done? I don't want anything done. I, and I didn't want to fight with you. You're my buddy. Well, but just, you're fighting with me. It's just like not telling Lincoln to duck. You know, it was kind of a big job. That's, you know. Lincoln, how do we get the, we get the I'm just saying there's marks with that wine. Uh, I'm just saying there's responsibilities. You want some cheese with that wine? Oh, Eat yourself for over there. crying out loud. You better get out of the way before I knock you out of the way. Come on. Because we don't have the seats that we can bolt together. You shut your crap up. Thanks, Royal. Thanks, Royal. Thanks, Royal. Bye. You know there's over 700 parts that go into a dash, and I got every one of them ready. And it's ready to put the dash together and in the car. So why don't we do that? Next time you guys are guessing about how it gets done, just open up the book and take a real close look. Look between this fantastic car. and great in the dictionary and you'll see a picture of me. This car shares a lot of the same parts. Did you fart? Car. We're getting a nice early start today on the Challenger. All the guys showed up, they're on time, they're in a good mood, so maybe we'll get a lot of work done. Tony showed up today from Tony's Mopar Parts. You might know him as Tony D'Agostino. How are you, buddy? Good, good to meet you, Mark. Yeah, good Hi, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice How to meet you. you. Good. My name is Tony D'Agostino, and I own Tony's Mopar Parts. I sell used original, NOS original parts, and we uh, manufacture a handful of reproduction stuff that's needed in the hobby. Let's put the heater box in. Okay. 
We don't want to talk about my heater box, do we? Toners, go up and open up the hood. I'm going to have you be okay. running the, uh, that side of it. If this was like a boxing match, if we were going to have a mental boxing match about Mopar knowledge, uh, I would say he's Apollo Creed um, and I'm Rocky Balboa. You know, I, I, I know I probably am not going to win the title, but if I could just go the distance, you know, that's what I ever wanted to do, you know. Okay, smarty pants. It's about time somebody called Mark to task on some of this stuff. You know what you call me? I know they're going, I know they're going. Hey, why are we putting the heater box in? Darren, why didn't you put the firewall insulation package in like I asked you to? You never asked me. Yeah, I did ask you. Never mind. Do you have the black plastic? Stop with the popcorn. If you keep running around eating the popcorn, I'm going to kill you. I don't know anything about the popcorn deal. Hey, Mark. Grab me butter. <laughs> Stop eating popcorn. <laughs> Uh, it, you you come out here and work for a year and see what happens to you. You'll be writing your name in poop on the walls backwards and reading it in the mirror. <laughs> I'm just eating popcorn. I don't know why you get so bad at shape about it. It's a free world, isn't it? Free speech, free religion, free everything. Free popcorn. Mm -hmm. Want some popcorn, Tony? So I got those in plate. No thanks, I'm good on that. You're done eating popcorn. That didn't go over very good, did it? There's been uh, some episodes today with popcorn. Mostly Darren just uh, doing his Darren thing, trying to light people up, and he looks like he got Mark going a little while ago. Did you wonder why I got a, 22, a 960 22-inch radiator, but I've got a fan shroud on it and a seven-blade fan that doesn't use the clutch? Is that right? Yes, it is. Be darn. Yeah. You know that? Well, the 22-inch radiator, of course, didn't get the clutch. That's right. Yeah, me and Tone go back and forth like that a lot, that kind of stuff. We always just kind of, we call it like high-flying martial arts, Mopar ninja type stuff, though. So. It's cool to come out here and deal with Mark and uh, go head to head a little bit with some of the information we both think the other one doesn't know. I know a lot about the Mopar stuff. Um, he actually can trump me in that area. He, he is a walking encyclopedia, so he knows the parts catalogs better than Chrysler. They're, what can you say, right? But you know what I realized, Tone? What's that, Mark? Because, you know, you hit me on a few of these things, you know, and I'm, I'm a little bit rusty. I'm flying around with these guys. These are the guys that I'm bouncing my brilliance off of. No wonder I don't grow and aspire. I come at you, somebody like you comes out here, right? You know what's funny, and we're, Mark, and we're throwing you're around all so these numbers, and we're just, around right, Tony, you know, A33, A32, A54, D21, we're just rattling. You know, and my brains are starting to come together, you know? With those guys, I learned how to fart the national anthem. That doesn't do me any good. Hard to fly with them, their eagles, when you're soaring around with a bunch of turkeys. Why you know don't saying? you just get over that stuff now? Enough's enough. Having Tony come out is great. It's an extra set of hands, knowledgeable hands. We're getting a lot done. We are now ready to install the dash assembly in the 70 Challenger sunroof car. Twice as much as my life. Get out of my aura. Josh. Bro. I got this in. OK. I'm going to get right here. Okay. We're in. Watch that uh, plug okay. up on Hang top. Hang on, yep. That's what I was going to yeah. say. This is going together so smooth, I couldn't be happier. Speaking of holes, I see uh, you got the three-speaker dash in this. Yeah, it's an R22 car, it's got three-speaker dash. Do you have, you know there's a difference, do you have the right uh, speaker curls for it? Difference in what? Uh, Barracuda and Challenger. The uh, Challenger ones will say J, because that's the Chrysler symbol for, you know, Challenger, and the Barracuda ones, Barracuda ones say B. They are? Did you know that? You say J, yeah. You say J? Mine say J? Well, why didn't I know that? It does go to show you that you never know everything. Every single day I learn something new, and in this case, that's what I learned with that. Can't believe it. Beautiful, and huh? Looks nice. Looks really good. Just Dashes does a nice job on these dashes. You know, I mean, they're, they're, I don't know anybody doing a better job with the stitching and everything. It's a... Uh, it's great to know at least they're, they're out there. And it's nice to doing it on a factory frame too. Right. It's not some kind of reproduction right. frame that's not going to fit. fiberglass ones that don't fit for crap, yep. At least with this one we know we got or it. Or plastic. Yeah, uh, ABS. Some, yeah. No, and they'll warp too in a matter of time because that takes all the heat, especially yep. black dish paper. Right. They, you know. Yeah, warp to crap. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's good. Good deal on that. We did it. Awesome. Cool. Turds! I'm happy to be here what I am today and just wait and see it done. The dash came out gorgeous. I'm super happy with how that went. Uh, having Tony out was great. We had a lot of fun doing some uh, Mopar mental sparring with the numbers and the codes for them. That's always a blast. Um, I don't get to do it too often, but really it's back to reality for me now. I gotta go in and call Overstock about a missing package. I, I'm not saying I didn't get the packages, okay? I know I got the package. 
I know it's written here. I'm looking at a copy of it, as I told you three times. I've got a copy of the manifest. I see the snow cone maker. I see the projector. I see the surround sound. I see the hot dog machine. What I don't see in my shop that I do see in front of me is a popcorn maker. That's what I want to know. Do you have anything for that? Do you have, do you have any? Who, who's, who signed for this stuff? According to my documents here, it's signed as Mark Woman. There is no Mark Woman, okay? It's Mark Warman, W-O-R-M-A-N. Have you not seen the show, Graveyard Cars? No, sir, I haven't. Yeah, well, you know what I haven't seen? I haven't seen my pop. Mother f Mark texted me and wants me to meet him here at the studio. I'm not sure what it's about, but I'm hoping that I will get my office back. Hi. Been waiting long? Not too long. <laughs> okay, so the reason you're here. I know Darren's been giving you a ration of crap. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I know you text me a couple times, but I've just been laying below the radar not to make you squirm. I want to show you what I've been doing, because you're also the only person I can trust to keep their mouth shut. Okay. So I told you I was working on your office, and I am. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, the big part that I've been doing for the guys, I want to show you right now. Okay. Are you ready, Freddie? I am. All right. After you, young lady, just walk straight ahead. I know it's a little dark. Are you ready? Yeah. What? This project is exciting. Wow. That's how I roll. That's what I'm talking this about. This is amazing. Well, that's what I do. It totally makes sense why Mark has been so stressed out. <laughs> well, I've been just, I told you I've been going crazy trying to get all this stuff done. Wow. And keep, it, and keep it under wraps and keep my mouth shut and not share it because you know my mouth. I think that the guys are just going to love it. This is awesome. I am the best person to keep this secret. I hope I can keep a secret. <laughs> I would not consider this our very best and most profitable week. It did not start out well. What happened? Well, the Daytona got dropped. Got Which damaged. is Royal's fault. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much Royal's fault, yes. We're never going to push a car into that assembly room without suspension underneath the front never. end of it. Period. But Derek's getting it fixed, and it'll be spotted in, and we'll be OK. All right. Tom will never know. Well, he probably oh, know when oh, he yeah, watches probably. the episode, but yeah. Holly's learning a lot. She's doing really well. Getting her fingers dirty in there, uh, learning a little bit about cars. She's already kind of surpassed you, I'd say, just what a little she bit. Do? She took the rear end suspension apart. She's, oh, okay. she's been working on cars. Right, what do you mean what she do? Where have you been? She's out there with Josh. Jeep. Oh, boy. Jeep. Royal got a Jeep. Make Darren Betty upset. It's got a salvage title. It's got a, it's, it's not, it's not safe. Dash came out nice. Let's, just, let's go on to happy okay. things. Right. Let's just be happy. The dash came out good. That's a good thing. Yeah, the dash came out pretty, beautiful. Pretty, pretty. And that's probably the nicest dash we've ever done. But instrument specialties helped us out because they right. did all the instrumentation on it. Even Absolutely work. gorgeous. Everything worked on it. Oh, yeah. A thief broke in and stole a popcorn maker. Have you ever out? been to prison? I'm not going to prison. I didn't do anything. Popcorn maker needs to be returned to the shop by tomorrow or you're going to prison. And believe me, they will trade you for one cigarette, not a pack. Tell Bubba hi.